Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be looking at the topic of molecular biology. Let's go ahead and define some important terminology. First, genetics. Now this is the study of inheritance. This is when you're learning if you have genes which are dominant or recessive, and we've learned that Gregor Mendel is the father of classical genetics. Uh, now, genome, what is this? This is the sum total of all the genetic material from an organism. So when you hear the term the Human Genome Project, what we're really talking about is all the genetic material that we humans possess, that we share. A chromosome is a piece of elongate DNA, so it's a long segment of DNA. Um, in humans, you know that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, that gives 46. We also have one more chromosome, the mitochondrial DNA, so humans actually have a total of 47 chromosomes. Finally, gene, what is this? This is a piece of DNA which is going to code for a specific protein, or in some cases, codes for a piece of RNA. Uh, here we see a picture of Watson and Crick in 1953 with their first model of DNA. Model building at that time was a fairly novel approach in science. However, their discovery of the structure of DNA was incredibly important because it allowed for scientists to understand how DNA could store information, how DNA could be replicated for cell division, and how eventually that information from DNA, uh, the information that was stored in DNA, could be retrieved and used to build proteins. On this slide, we're reviewing the basic structure of DNA. DNA is a polymer, and the monomers that make up DNA are called nucleotides. Nucleotides contain three parts. You've got a sugar in DNA, that's deoxyribose. You have a phosphate group, and then you have a nitrogenous base. We see the nitrogenous bases are shown here. They are cytosine and thymine. These are pyrimidines. The purines include adenine and guanine. Now here is um, one side of a DNA molecule, and we can see the backbone is an alternating sequence of, here's the sugar, that's the deoxyribose, the yellow is the phosphate group, so it goes sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, and then attached to every sugar is a different example of a nitrogenous base. The single rings representing pyrimidines, like cytosine and thymine, the double ring structures representing the purines, adenine and guanine. And generally, we'll abbreviate, so we'll use A for adenine, G for guanine, C for cytosine, and T for thymine. There is another nitrogenous base you need to know about. It's called uracil. It's found in RNA. Um, other things about RNA, we know that we actually have a different sugar. It's now ribose sugar. It's very similar in structure to deoxyribose, just a few modifications. And RNA is a single-stranded molecule. On this slide, we're looking at the topic of DNA replication. This is how DNA actually makes copies of itself. Now, at the top of the screen, you're going to notice it says 5 prime, 3 prime. This is actually telling us information about the direction of the two strands of the DNA molecule. So if you remember the sugar phosphate backbone, those run parallel to each other, but they actually run in opposite directions. So we can imagine uh, pens or pencils representing this. So we can see that my uh, pen here is pointing up, the one here is pointing down. So this is giving us that feel for anti-parallel. Now, in DNA replication, uh, we have a number of different enzymes that are playing really important roles. There's an enzyme called helicase. The job of this enzyme is to actually unzip the DNA molecule, and we can see that here's a DNA molecule before being copied, and here we have uh, the DNA which has already been unzipped. So the helicase enzyme would be right here at the replication fork, and it would be moving up on your screen. We have another enzyme called primase. This is going to add an RNA primer. Uh, this begins the sequence of replicating a new strand of DNA. Uh, there's a third enzyme that we'll talk about. It's called DNA ligase. This is going to join Okazaki fragments. DNA replication has to occur in only one direction. It moves in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So on this side, we can see that this is called the leading strand, and this can be continuous replication of the DNA. On the other strand, the DNA replication still has to move 5' prime to 3'. Prime. So it starts here and copies, and then once the replication fork moves up, it can do another small segment, and it, this process keeps going over and over again. So there are these small Okazaki fragments that are going to need to be, get stitched together, and that's the job of DNA ligase. Uh, we also have DNA polymerase 3, 
Uh, this is adding bases to the new strand, so it's matching up A's and T's. It's matching up G's with C's. And then we have DNA polymerase 1. This is going to have the job of removing those RNA primers and fixing gaps and errors within the copying process. So every once in a while there are errors that are being made, but there's a molecular mechanism to go and try to find those errors and fix them. In most of the cases, that's what happens. Those errors do get fixed most of the time. Here's some really inf important information about molecular biology. We do refer to this as the central dogma, the central teaching of molecular biology. It says this, DNA is a molecule which is capable of copying itself. This would be the process of DNA replication. DNA can then be used to uh, produce RNA molecules. This is the process of transcription. Now, once you're producing RNA molecules, those molecules can be translated, and that's going to lead to the production of different proteins. The human organism is believed to have somewhere in the neighborhood of 30,000 different genes, so all of these different genes are capable of producing different proteins that all perform different functions in our bodies. On this slide, we're going to take a closer look at that process of transcription. This is when DNA is used to produce strands of RNA. Now, we need to remember our complementary base pairing. Remember this rule, eat dinner at George Clooney's house. So A's go with T's, G's go with C's. Now the U, the uracil, is going to replace thymines, the T's, in RNA molecules. So here's a DNA strand right here. Remember, it's a double-stranded molecule. During the process of transcription, that DNA is going to unzip. It'll eventually come back together, but for a short period of time, it unzips, and a, an enzyme called RNA polymerase will actually read what's called a template strand. So here's a template strand that we can see right here. So this is part of a DNA molecule. The RNA polymerase will read this and say, okay, here's an A. Normally, I would put a T with it, but we're making RNA, so we're going to match up a U with the A. Here's a T, so we need to match up an A with that. Here's a G, I need a C. Here's a C, I need a G to go with that. And uh, this process will continue for as long as the, um, the segment of DNA that the RNA polymerase is going to read here is, and this would be um, basically a gene. Uh, so again, in this process, we have DNA, which is being used to produce messenger RNA. There are other port, uh, types of RNA that can be produced also by the process of transcription. Um, and again, RNA polymerase is the most important enzyme to know about for this process. That's the enzyme responsible for unwinding the DNA and then catalyzing or just triggering that process of synthesis of the new molecule, the messenger RNA molecules and the other types of RNA molecules that can come from different genes. Now, messenger RNA molecules are formed in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. Once that messenger RNA molecule is formed, it will actually uh, leave the DNA. The DNA zips back together. The messenger RNA molecule will then leave the nucleus and travel to the ribosome, which is the site of protein synthesis. This is where proteins are built. Uh, a transcription unit is the stretch of DNA, which is going to be transcribed into one RNA molecule. And then the messenger RNA molecule, which is shown here, uh, we see in purple and green, that's going to be read by the ribosomes. They're going to stitch together from the information in that messenger RNA different proteins, uh, sequences of amino acids. So the ribosome will basically read that messenger RNA molecule. Different RNA molecules called tRNAs for transfer RNAs will carry in uh, appropriate amino acids. They'll match up with the right uh, codons, the correct codons on the messenger RNA, and then we get a growing chain of amino acids. A chain of amino acids is building a protein. Uh, so we do want to remember the jobs of the different types of RNA. Messenger RNA carries the genetic message from the nucleus to the ribosome, the site of uh, protein synthesis. Transfer RNA, those are these, they carry the different amino acids. Remember there's 20 different amino acids that make up the proteins that are found in our bodies. And then finally, rRNA, that's the ribosomal RNA. Uh, this ribosome shown in blue here is the um, cell part which is responsible for protein synthesis. Ribosomes have two different subunits and they are made of RNA as well. So ribosomal RNA uh, makes up the ribosome. This slide shows us the genetic code. My students will do an additional learning activity to learn how to read the genetic code, but we'll do a quick, quick review of that here. Uh, we know that the genetic code consists, consists of 
triplets of nucleotides. Uh, for example, if we have a messenger RNA that contains the sequence AUG, the first base of that triplet is an A, so I know that I would read here for the first base. The second nitrogenous base is a U, so I would be in the third box down uh, first column. And then G, for my third base, is the bottom one listed here. So AUG, that codon, would tell the ribosome to insert the amino acid methionine into a growing protein chain. If there was a different, uh, now the second codon, if that was a different sequence of three letters, let's say it was UAG, that would actually stop the process of protein synthesis. So we wouldn't want that so early in the process. Let's go with UAC. That would give the amino acid tyrosine. So the ribosome is going to continue to read three-letter sequence, three-letter sequence, three-letter sequence. The genetic code is nearly universal in most organisms. Their genetic code follows this exactly. There are some exceptions. For example, in mitochondrial DNA, uh, some of the codons actually have different meanings. And uh, the reasoning behind this, uh, we understand that mitochondria are the descendants of ancient bacterial cells which were engulfed by uh, larger cells which had um, nuclei um, and that ancient symbiotic uh, event, um, you know, we know that there was DNA that was carried by those bacteria which are, are now the modern day mitochondria. So there are some reasons there for uh, slight differences in how their DNA codes for information as opposed to how the nuclear DNA would code for information.